Okay, so let's take a look at uh, writing functions in Swift 2, and this is actually no different than if we were to do this in uh, Swift 1, but uh, let's make a new one. So go over here and write funk. All right, uh, let's uh, look up user. How about that? Look up user, and we are just going to do a opening and closing parentheses and then an opening and closing squiggly bracket so we're not going to pass anything into this function for right now and we're not going to return anything out of it so if we just want to call it all we do is we just take this part right here with those parentheses just paste it right here and uh, to prove we actually called it let's put in here prove we called the function and we're going to build it real fast and of course, all we're going to see down here is that we printed out a line down the bottom. All right, so that's uh, that's not that exciting. Of course, we could put any other code inside of here that we wanted. And just to kind of prove something, let's do this. Let's call this one first. Now, even though this function is written below this one, that doesn't matter. You can put them wherever you want in any order. It's how you call them. Okay, so if I were to run this again, you're obviously going to see that our second function technically ran before this other one. So again, just does not matter how you write them. We don't need two functions for now, though. Uh, let's pass a value into this. So what we're going to do is we're going to specify uh, the name of it. So we're going to put in here um, some num and we're going to write in here that this is going to be an integer type value and then once we are inside of here let's use that value so i'm just going to print back out some num let's comment out that right now and if i were to try to run this it's telling me what that well okay i'm calling a function but i'm not giving it what it wants it wants a number inside of here so i could uh put in here number eight and I was like, well, why are you complaining about that? Uh, and obviously you can see that it printed out that number eight. But I could also put in here a variable that is of that same type. So my number, that's an integer type. It's going to go in here and it should be uh, just fine. And of course, you're going to see 10 now because that's what that uh, variable equals. So now that you've got that number inside there, you can do anything with it you want. You could, um, this, the function could be, just be used to add up something, or it could be used to uh, iterate in another type of um, uh, bit of code called a for statement. So you could uh, iterate through and create, you know, 10 spaceships based on that. So instead of calling this lookup user, we might call this create spaceships. You specify the number that you're going to create, and it does that based on this. But uh, let's kind of keep following with uh, looking up the user. So f let's return a value uh, from this. So now I'm going to specify that we're going to return a string value. And to do that, I, I, I make this cool little arrow right here. <laughs> okay. And then I specify the type that we're going to return now it's, it's complaining because I haven't returned anything from this okay so I need, I need to put in here return and you know you could in theory you know return Justin right here and it's gonna stop complaining about it uh, but obviously we, we probably want to return something that's not hard-coded in here like Justin and uh, that will be our user that we're gonna look up so for example let's uh, get rid of this and we're going to put in here var uh, some user. This is going to be a string. And uh, just for right now, let's put that in there. So, oh, and sorry, there's one equal sign. Now, obviously, we're not changing this, and this is that um, warning that I was or complaint I was telling you about before, where I didn't actually get it to show up. But it's uh, it's saying my user was never mutated, so consider changing to let constant. And that's in this case, it is a good point. You know, I'm not changing this at all, so I could have just gone and said let, uh, because I know in this case, for example, some user's not changing. But that's uh, not where we're headed with this. We do want to change the user based on. The number that we put uh, pass in here. So what I could say is I could say if uh, some num equals ten, 
And when you're doing an if statement, you do have to put in the two equal signs. Uh, let's get rid of this. Then in that case, I'm going to say return. Uh, well, no, you know what? I'm sorry. We're going to say some user is going to equal Justin uh, else. We could change this around. We could say else if some num is, oh, let's just do greater than 10. Okay. Uh, we'll put in here all other users and now because I'm not putting this return statement in either the if or the else if I can just leave it down here at the bottom and it's just going to return out whatever value that was I could though do this I could return some user I re could return it here and let's see if it complains about that I, it, it's it's possible in this case that neither of these conditions are satisfied so the warning I'm getting is it's saying, well here, let's read it, missing return in a function expected to return string. Because again, if let's say I pass in here sum num equals nine, well, that doesn't equal 10 and it's not greater than 10, so we'd have a problem. In which case, if you're gonna do that, you have to put in here one final else statement that's just gonna kinda satisfy all conditions and again, you can then return just some user. But we don't have to do that because we can just put that one statement right down there at the very bottom, and uh, let's uh, let's give this a test. So, really, we're not going to be able to see anything printed out uh, from this. Or we're not going to see the user because even though we're calling this, we're not really using the return right here. So, what I could do is I could print out though this. So, let's give it a shot. Ah, see, told me Justin, if I were to change this to 11, one more than 10, <laughs> all other users. And maybe more to the point would, do, would be to take that out of here and then say, let uh, my username, this is going to be a string, it's going to equal look up user, and I'm not going to get any complaints out of this because I'm returning out of this a string value okay and then I'm gonna just print out uh, the username right there and let's give it one more shot okay it's still all other users now look what happens if I try to do this I'm gonna put int inside of here I'm gonna specify that this is gonna be an int and the compiler is automatically gonna go wait a minute string is not convertible to int in other words it knows that this function right here is gonna return a string value and it already knows that that's it doesn't make sense <laughs> you know so again it's the so I think it's a good idea to always specify the the, the type that uh, you know is gonna come into the variable uh, you could with Swift do this and it's not gonna complain it's gonna infer that my username is gonna be a, a string type but I think it's just a good idea to get used to just doing a colon after your variables. If you know the type it's going to be, throw it on in there. Okay, so what if we have a little bit more business to do inside of our function? For example, we want to pass in two parameters. Well, you're going to comma separate them and let's, uh, let's put in another type. So we'll say add on uh, this and we're going to specify that that's going to be a string so the problem we're going to have now is that we call the function but we didn't supply the add-on part of it so over here what we're going to do now is we're going to leave this front part the same but we're going to say add on this and then whatever part we want to add on is a dork okay and then let's uh, so we're grammatically correct when we print this out <laughs> I'll change that to 10 and then what we'll do is we'll come down here and we'll say plus add on this. Okay, so we're passing in this part of it. It's going to get chunked onto this part right here. Oh, let's put a space in there so it actually reads as not one word. And uh, let's see what happens now. What? I'm not a dork. All right, so there you go. You can see I can pass in uh, more than one parameter and you can just do the same thing uh, for any other ones uh, that you want to put in here. Just comma separate them. Uh, just remember that this is going to be the part that you're going to refer to it as inside 
of the statement of the inside of the uh, the function block and there you go